343 finally speaks up about the development of Halo Infinite during that delay. And now the engine is revving up. We're gonna get some big news about season two this week as well. And episode two of the Halo TV show looks to be, well, rather concerning for Halo fans. And if you wanna know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going Halo fans? Kevin here once again, giving our news and informational video about Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let's me know you wanna see some more content like this as it greatly helps out the video and channel get a better place within the all famous YouTube algorithm. And if you wanna stay up to everything going on with Halo, make sure you tap subscribe button. Let's get right into those details. So this video right here that was posted by the Washington Post Gaming, which is like, I didn't even know they had a section about that for gaming, um, but they were talking to them with 343 and how like their experience was when it came to delaying Halo Infinite and what the experience was a little bit when it came to developing Halo during the pandemic and how that affected the development of things. And they were rather open and rather candid about saying like, yeah, it definitely threw a wrench in the system for sure. And sounds like they, basically said it kind of slowed things down and made things, of course, way more difficult than they need to be. I mean, I'm kind of surprised how decently well Halo Infinite launched for having a pandemic completely shock the development cycle during a release year, which is like the most crucial time for game development. But there's a quote in this video from Joseph Stein right here that got a lot of people really concerned about the engine in a way. And I want to play it for you guys so you guys can hear what we're talking about. It's challenging to always be constantly open and transparent with fans because we don't want to expose them to the uncertainty and sometimes that that churn that happens on any game development process. The decision we're making though, and I believe this is the right one, even though it's hard some days, is to make sure that when we talk to our fans that they can rely on what we say. Fans are really soon going to be exposed to some really cool stuff that we've got going on for season two. It's taken a little bit longer to get the engine up to speed. Communication's flowing in the way that we want to, but the engine is cranking and I'm super excited about the next year and beyond. Um, the engine is just revving up now? Cause that sounds incredibly concerning, right? Where like you expect the, at least the engine to be at where you need it to be for when the game launches so you can actually follow up with this live service of Halo Infinite. And so you're like, just now, like kind of things are starting to get a little bit better. I mean, at least there's progress, but that sounds really concerning, right? Well, turns out that's not exactly what Joseph Staten meant. And he clarified this on Twitter saying here, glad this clip is out for all to see. To clarify one thing I said, engine was my metaphor for the whole Halo Infinite multiplayer live service. That engine is revving and we are very excited for, to share season two details. So that's what he was talking about saying like the engine, the moving parts are starting to get going for season two you now beyond just like the engine of Halo Infinite. So that's why he was really kind of trying to get at was that things are starting to kind of move up and get going again because we've been pretty much low key pretty much ever since the tactical ops event. And I don't really expect anything much happening until the release of season two, which I believe is May 2nd. Though hearing just that context, you could totally think, okay, when you mean like the game engine itself is starting to get where it needs to be, because that sounds really concerning, but it meant just more like the engine of Halo as a whole is starting to kind of get going. We're getting momentum. Things are going to go pretty well. Sounds like season two does have some pretty good stuff coming in for us, which I'm very excited about. We have some new modes and we return of King of the Hill. We got two new maps coming in as well. And I'm sure we got a bunch of other things coming in as well, which we actually will know more coming in later this week, coming from 343. In a reply to our good buddy, Pat Man Gaming, talking about no blog that was last week, Brian Gerard, who is the community director, said this at 343 saying, uh, no blog today, I'm afraid, but we should have some initial season one feedback outcome slash info to share next week. So this is basically all the stuff they see that, like, okay, this is stuff that needs to be changed or updated that we found out from season one. So some of the things I'm sure that are gonna be on mine are one, it's gonna be customization, talking about possibility of cross core customization, even though we do know that uh, there is gonna be a little bit more leniency when it comes to your customization options within Halo Infinite coming season two. I'm 
really hoping for a sandbox update, something involving hopefully changing up the Mangler in some way, changing up the Ravager, the Plasma Pistol, maybe get the Sniper a little bit as well. Uh, just trying to get some other weapons that definitely need some love to be a little bit more effective on the battlefield to be able to be more usable to create more diversity within the gameplay of Halo Infinite, because right now, yeah, it's pretty stale. I hope they also address the ranking system in some kind of way, maybe some major updates where like it would actually feel gratifying to win games in ranked, because right now it just feels like a total grind trying to win ranked games and oftentimes you win a game you're like here's one csr you're like woo wow great and the next game you crash you lose 15 csr it's very demoralizing but there's one way to kind of get that energy back up for you guys when you're playing the game is to check out well glitch energy i've recently partnered up with glitch gaming and that is because the product that they have right here is actually Pretty freaking awesome. This is kind of the same thing as you'd see for like Advanced GG or G Fuel, stuff like that. But the major difference with this is that it is a much better product as it has much better ingredients that are not so, well, to put it frank, bad for you. It's packed full of like vitamin B12, vitamin C and stuff like that. And it uses sucralose as the sweetener. So it doesn't use sugar. So you don't take any extra calories from that either. And also a great thing is that it kind of provides that boost of energy while you're playing without any of the crashes from like energy drinks and stuff like that. One of the things that Glitch is actually currently pushing right now is the beginner pack for just $10. You get to jump in and try out some of the most popular flavors from Glitch Energy. Right now, I'm actually trying out the Berry Acai, which is kind of more like a blueberry kind of flavored one. And it is honestly, it's great. I have it every time on stream. They even hooked me up with a shaker as well, which is pretty freaking cool. And overall glitch, well, it's pretty dang awesome. And if you guys want to check them out, go check out the link in the pinned comment and in the description down below. If you want to buy anything from them, make sure to use code KevinCoolX for 25% off your purchase. So thank you Glitch Energy for being a awesome sponsor to the channel, but let's get right back into those details right here. So if you guys don't know Angry Joe, he's one of the most popular gaming YouTubers out there. And of course, he watched the, you know, the Halo show guy early access to the show as well. Talking about his experience of watching. He said the first episode was great, but then he talks about here for episode two is where things get a little, well, concerning to say the least. Saying that he watched this first two episodes of the Halo TV show series and um, who is this supposed to be for? Sure, it may look like Halo, but it sure doesn't feel like it. After a somewhat solid action-packed episode one, the series really drops hard in the boring AF second episode on the whole, it's disappointing, which I'm like, I don't know, man. Like that's pretty dang concerning from my point of view when it comes to hearing that because like I trust Joe when it comes to his points when it comes to game because like, I think if you guys ever watched his uh review on the Halo game itself for Halo Infinite I thought it was rather on point where the campaign he said it was fantastic but the multiplayer just lacked the features that you would expect to see from a multiplayer game but a really interesting thing here he kind of goes on and talks about a little bit more in the Twitter thread here about episode two saying in response about like how say people say they just want to hate on everything which is kind of like Joe's thing but like he does it in a fair way i'd say and also he says the episode is just episode two is just not good it's going to be interesting to see some of the people doubling down after that one which is going to be mean doubling down as in just being like the show itself just isn't good now from my experience of watching the halo show uh, at least for episode one I, I thought it was fantastic. Like I thought episode one was great. Like at first I was like, yeah, I don't know. That assault rifle looked a little iffy. But I would say for the most part, episode one was actually like really great. After the second time watching it, I'm actually like liking it even more. Now I will say I did get access to see episode two and I'm not gonna spoil anything here. It's very dialogue focused. There's like no like action scenes or something like that. It's certainly an episode that's kind of meant to kind of like fulfill those subplots that were kind of set up in episode one and a lot of discussions about the actions that happened kind of in episode one as well. But to say it was a bad episode and super disappointing, I would not agree. Though there is one section where I was like, I think they could have done it in a better way though. But, uh, but overall, I think it still works. Again, no spoilers here, but I wouldn't go as far as what Joe is saying about the second episode. And also, like I said earlier in my previous Halo show, TV show discussion videos, saying that I kind of hold off in all my judgments of the show until the show is over. And then once I get the full story and see how these different plot points kind of fulfill themselves out, then I'll come up with the decision whether or not the stuff that they brought up in earlier in the season was actually really good. All I can really do is give like first impressions kind of thing. And my first impressions, at least of episode one and episode two, the show's great. My wife and I are really enjoying it and we cannot wait until episode three. I think it really just kind of depends on what your expectations were for the Halo TV show for me i just kind of wanted to feel like halo and episode two certainly was new 
to the Halo experience, I guess I would say. But it, it definitely still felt like a Halo game. It was just very much about the dialogue. And actually, a former Bungie dev talks about Episode 3, because he mentioned it with Frankie, as in Frank O'Connor, saying that Episode 3 will be a little bit more comfortable, more something that fans are a little bit more comfortable with when it comes to that episode. So I kind of expect things to kind of come back to me with some more action, some more cool alien blasting goodness and all that kind of stuff so again like it's like i said earlier like it's when it comes to shows it's more about um understanding it as an entire piece rather than episode by episode because some episodes are going to be more entertaining than the others some episodes are going to be not as good as others as well but the main thing is like as overall as a season did all the plot points and all the action scenes make sense but i will provide my full thoughts and opinions about episode two on thursday so i'll see you guys there for that video but if you're new to the channel and missing any content from me recently check out this playlist right here i got linked to all my halo infinite news and informational videos right there thanks so much for watching i greatly appreciate it and i'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.